Finding the right camera to shoot with is an intensely difficult task. There are so many parameters involved into the actual camera itself, the picture quality, the audio quality. So many things make up a good camera to shoot with. Chase Jarvis famously said, the best camera is the one that's with you. And the one camera that's with me pretty much all the time is this, the iPhone 11 Pro. So this video is my long awaited iPhone 11 Pro review from a filmmaking perspective. I've been sticking with iOS for a long time mainly because of the camera. But what I always kind of fail to acknowledge when I talk about that is the video quality. It's not just the photos. Most smartphones these days from pretty much all major brands have done an excellent job with the photography on their cameras. But for me, the video quality is still leaps and bounds ahead on iOS. Now I've been wanting to make this video for a few weeks. I was kind of hoping to do like a month review, but things have just gotten busy around here and I've been doing a couple of commercial projects and that obviously takes time with edits and getting client reviews and I've not really been as active on this YouTube channel as I would have hoped. However, I have been pretty active on my Instagram and I've been posting a lot of my stories and I've been filming an awful lot with this camera. I checked earlier and I've actually shot over 1700 video clips with this phone in the last two months. That's a lot of footage. Alongside some of the video projects I've been working on, I've been hard at work to finally make publicly available the video LUTs that I use to color grade my footage. So I've been working on these for around 12 months or so, tweaking and perfecting them and testing them all around the world in various locations. And I'm so stoked to be able to make them publicly available. So if you want to check the link in the description uh, where you can purchase those, I've currently got an introductory discount running on those. And also all of the clips in this video have been graded using some of the LUTs from that collection. So I actually released a video very recently of everyday sights and sounds of Japan filmed 100% with the iPhone 11 Pro. Now the feedback on that has actually been amazing. I kind of strung those clips together as a way to just see video footage and to kind of get the ambience of Japan, um, some of the cities, some of the countryside, but you guys seem to really love it. Now I've been filming mostly with the Filmic Pro app designed for filmmakers. It offers a load of controls and extra features that you don't get within the native app. Now I'm not gonna lie, it is one of the most expensive apps I've actually purchased for my iPhone, but I do believe it's definitely worth it. So let's run through some of my pros and cons and then a wrap up of my thoughts for the iPhone 11 Pro. <music> the top of my list for positives is the sheer picture quality. The iPhone just does a tremendous job at getting great image quality. The cleanliness of the picture and the color, the consistency through different scenes is smooth, creatively tasteful, and just works so, so well. Now within Filmic Pro, I've been shooting in the Filmic Extreme bitrate. Probably one of the biggest compliments about the iPhone camera is that no one ever seems to notice or make comments about it when I include it within some of my videos on this channel. And I do it a lot. I include iPhone footage so many times when my GH5 is maybe just too big of a camera to have at a scene. I'm not saying that it definitely isn't noticeable between them. It just doesn't stick out as much as if I'd used another camera such as a point and shoot or maybe a GoPro or another smartphone. <laughs> And that leads me on to probably my second biggest positive of the camera. And that is the fact that because it is so small, it's literally there whenever you are. And that is probably one of the biggest factors of a good camera is being able to just have it and use it. The sheer size of it and the discrete nature of it means that you can use it in environments that you maybe otherwise wouldn't get the same results if you used a bigger camera. The Sights and Sounds of Japan video that I made may not have had the same feel to it if I was using a bigger camera that attracts so much more attention. The clips where I've got people walking through a scene and they're kind of just carrying on. If I was filming with a big camera and a big fluffy microphone on top, people would probably look at the camera and it completely changes the aesthetic of the video. Now it wasn't too long ago that Apple introduced the Smart HDR for video. Essentially, the way this works is you get exposures of frames for shadows, midtones, and highlights all blended together on the fly, second by second, as you're videoing. What it creates is footage with good exposure on all areas of a scene. 
and it's so noticeable with an iPhone. You can be filming outside and you can see the blues in the sky, you can see the detail in the shadows, but it's not overdone. It's not hugely ramped up in the shadows and brought down in the highlights. It's just done tastefully and creatively. You have no idea how difficult that can actually be to do on a traditional camera without the use of filters and without just paying extra attention to your exposure settings. It does potentially come at the cost of using higher frame rates, which doesn't have as smooth a feel to it. But at the same time, it kind of comes into the balance of creativity on your videos, which is gonna stand out more, the frame rate for things or the overexposed highlights. You kind of just have to weigh the two together. Now, of course, you could get filters for the iPhone, but unfortunately, there aren't any that fit the iPhone 11 just yet with those three lens combinations. I'm hoping for third party manufacturers to make some bespoke filters for iPhone 11 Pro. Some features that I mentioned in my photography review of the iPhone were some of the slight improvements on the native camera interface. Now, one of my favorite features is being able to switch from photo mode into video simply by holding the shutter button. Now, this isn't new. We've seen this in Instagram and in Snapchat and other apps and other smartphones, but having it on iOS is just a great addition for efficiency. One thing that is really noticeable to me are the built-in microphones. Now, audio is a huge focus for me. And to be honest, I think it's probably the most important and often overlooked aspect of filmmaking. Now, all of the microphones on the iPhone, I believe are identical, and there are three of them. So you have the rear one, you have the lower one, and then you have the front facing one. What I love about Filmic Pro is you have the ability to choose which microphone you'd like to use when you're filming. Now, one thing I've noticed is that when I'm quite often filming outwardly and I'm very conscious of people around me who are maybe talking or there could be just some ambient noise or just something that's kind of noisy behind me, quite often I stop filming and then I start again waiting for the audio to drop. Now, the times where I haven't stopped filming and I remember as I'm looking over the footage that there was a siren or there was just people nattering beside me. And I'm watching it and I think, I can't actually hear that so well. That is such a huge feature. The microphones on here can be so directional to the point that you don't actually necessarily need to stop filming if you've got a slightly distracting person's conversation happening next to you as you're filming something. So the directional capabilities of the microphones is noticeable and is very welcome in my opinion. I've also been using the Rode VideoMic Me L, which is a lightning microphone that just plugs directly into the port at the bottom of the phone. The quality of the microphone is excellent. It's almost identical to the Video Micro and other microphones from Rode in that form factor. And it just adds even more direction and quality simply because it is a bigger microphone device. If they made one with USB-C, that would be great for so many other smartphone manufacturers. But to be honest, I only think they will actually do that if iPhone ever switched to USB-C. <laughs> There's also been a healthy improvement to the front facing camera on this year's iPhone. And I'm kind of surprised that a lot of people haven't really mentioned it or spoken about it. The front facing camera now shoots 4K 60 frames a second. I don't personally care too much for 60 frames on the front facing camera. Um, I shoot all of my stuff in 30 or 25, depending on where I am around the world. But having 4K means that I can, if I wish, use this as a vlogging camera for times when Again, my GH5 is in my bag or is just unaccessible. And in a pinch, it does a very good job. Probably the biggest hardware improvement of the iPhone this year that I was completely shocked to discover was the battery life. Honestly, the battery life has been insane. I've never had this big of an upgrade on a smartphone. It's phenomenal. Previously, if I was filming on my iPhone, I would noticeably see the battery deplete. With this iPhone, I've been filming so much more with it than any other iPhone or any other smartphone or point and shoot, to be honest. And the battery life is still there. And granted, I'm using this as a phone throughout the day as well. I'm posting so much online, I'm doing emails, I'm doing web browsing, checking directions, maps, listening to music, all of these things that are adding up to the battery life. And at the end of the day, I still consistently have 40, 30% battery life left. And that's like end of the day, midnight. It's crazy. I'm, I'm literally don't need to have a battery pack with me anymore. It's been the best upgrade on a battery life. I've ever seen. It's so good. 
And finally, with the hardware improvements on the iPhone from using the camera, some of the best features are actually when you're watching back the footage. The OLED screen is beautiful to look at. It is such a great display, especially watching video on the iPhone that's been filmed on the iPhone. You can really see just how it was intended. To conclude with my positives is actually the third party community and ecosystem. There has been such a draw for manufacturers to make products for it. You can actually set up complete rigs for iPhone. There are things that you can mount lenses to. There are whole lens systems for smartphones and so often they are designed iPhone first. It's really noticeable just how the community and industry has evolved around the iPhone. So we've run through all the positives that I like about the iPhone 11 Pro. Now let's get to some of the negatives and places where it can be improved. And some of these, they've been pain points for a number of years in a row. My number one complaint about using the iPhone for video and probably what stops me from using it even more is simply the file management. All of my cameras and all of my equipment has a very simple and similar workflow of shooting to a memory card. The iPhone unfortunately is an all-in-one device and is designed to be used on the iPhone. So it's important to note that all of your videos go into the Photos app on your iPhone. So in order to get them over to your Mac, there are three key ways to do that. The first one is to let iCloud do its sync. In theory, that seems great. Everything just works seamlessly and it just works in the background. However, in reality, and for someone like myself who's consistently traveling and working on projects in areas that maybe don't have the best internet, that can actually be a huge hindrance. Second to that, is that when you grab the files from the Photos app on your Mac, the date and timestamp for those video clips is at the point of when it was downloaded on the device, not when it was captured. That's a real big problem. So the best way to actually maintain the capture time and the timestamp on those video footage is to take it from the phone directly. Now it sounds counterproductive that the wireless system is faster than the wired. And that is down to one of the biggest problems with the lightning port on the iPhone. It still uses USB 2 technology. It's not even running at USB 3 speed. So although you could plug it into a USB-C connection, the actual port for the phone is USB 2. It's 2019 people, like what's going on there? My best option is always to airdrop video footage from the phone over to my Mac and use the peer-to-peer -peer wireless technology. It works 90% of the time. AirDrop is a phenomenal piece of technology, but when you're transferring 100, 200 video clips, it takes a while. Now I know you can use the Filmic Pro CMS functionality, which saves everything into the app, but the only way to access that is then back through that cabled lightning connection, which as we just mentioned is too slow. Yeah, I just kind of have to live with it. All of my footage goes into my camera roll and it's just, there endlessly. The negatives with the hardware on the camera that have been kind of noticeable to me, first and foremost is the inconsistent apertures between the three cameras. It's a shame to see that the hardware is actually limited quite substantially on the ultra wide in comparison to the wide and the tele. The ultra wide has an f2.4 aperture in comparison to the wide which is a 1.8 and the tele which is an f2 that's actually kind of noticeable between those. Further to that, I've been told that the sensor size in the wide is much larger than the ultra wide in the tele. So all of those together kind of end up with an ultra wide camera that has a pretty poor performance in low light and less than ideal scenarios. It's kind of noticeable and it's a shame that that's how it is. I've just found that even though I was testing a lot shooting ultra wide, wide and tele to see the clips compared, as time's gone on, I just don't use the ultra wide. In terms of software, and I mention this all the time, it's such a shame that you can't remap the camera icon to a different app. I would love to be able to make that my Filmic Pro app, just to be able to tap that or hold that button and take it into Filmic. Or even, here's an idea, what if you could hold it and then you get a choice, like with the 3D touch? Native camera, Instagram, Filmic Pro, Moment camera, all these different options, how great would that be? In fact, that actually would be a genuinely great solution. Why don't, Apple, if you're watching this, please get your software engineers to just add the option onto the camera app. Make a swipe to the native, but how about the hold could give you choice?
Just an idea. Another feature that I mentioned in my photography review that also applies to video is the fact that there's no built-in level for the on-screen display in the viewfinder. I'd just love to be able to know if my shot isn't 100% level on the X and Y axis. I have noticed that there's actually a center mark that appears when you're filming top-down. In the very center of the frame, it shows which way you're angling it, which is very useful because they're kind of tricky to get perspectively. Sometimes the footage can appear to be a little over sharpened. Now, I've always thought that iOS does a better job at being tasteful with this in comparison to other smartphone manufacturers, but I think they could actually go even further and just lower the sharpening, if not give a choice to remove it altogether. I'm not sure if it's a limitation in the API because I can't seem to find any sort of functionality to lower the sharpening in Filmic Pro, and I know it's never going to be there in the native app, but it's something that I would just like to see because it always looks so much better when you reapply it in post-production. So in conclusion, I actually think this has been a huge step up over the 10s and the 10. And if you're coming from any iPhone previous to that, it's gonna be a massive improvement. Now, of course, I'm not sponsored by Apple or told to say anything. This all comes from the heart. Yes, they have loaned me the phone and I've made a number of videos about it, but that's for two reasons. One, I have so much that I wanna talk about with it. And secondly, you guys have so much that you wanna ask about it. So it just kind of works as a two-way street. And that's why I've made such a heavy focus on it lately. Will it replace my GH5 and other cameras? It's closer than I thought. I'll never say never on things. And I always thought that the iPhone is just never gonna reach that kind of level. But I have to be honest, I've been reaching for my iPhone so much over the last two months in comparison to previous years to the point that I've been including the footage in my other videos so much more, I've been wanting to make dedicated videos with it. It's really standing out as a huge contender and always consistently is a great way to push the industry forward. It forces other camera manufacturers to have explosive new ideas in engineering and just other things. One camera that the iPhone has near enough all but replaced for me has been the DJI Osmo Pocket. Now that's kind of fallen into the category of being when I need a specific stabilized shot, or if I'm using it in a sports environment or a moving transport and things like that where I really need to use its best feature, which is that built-in gimbal. But otherwise, the iPhone has just knocked it out of the park. It's done so much more than I ever expected. But that doesn't always mean it's the best device for you to get. If you master the cameras that you already have, your work will improve far greater than any new product could ever achieve. So I hope you've enjoyed my run through of filmmaking on the iPhone. Make sure you check out my channel and subscribe to catch those future videos and projects coming soon. And of course, check out the links in the description. There's a lot of great stuff and value in there for you. All right, thanks for watching everyone and I'll catch you in another one very soon. See ya, bye bye.